This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to optimize Premiere's preferences for video editing. Now that we've got a sense of what the interface is, let's optimize the operation of the software. And the first thing that we're going to do is go to Premiere Pro and go to Preferences. There's lots of different preferences we can choose from. These are listed here. The categories are on the left. But there's only a few that I want to focus on. We're going to start with General. Inside General, you want to make sure, and this is a new feature, Display Color Management is turned on. This gives you the most accurate colors on your screen. It doesn't change the colors of your clips. It simply changes the colors of how your clips are displayed. The next one is autosave. Autosave automatically saves a backup of your projects. Now remember projects are how clips are edited. Media is separate from projects. Projects are the instructions. The media is that which is being edited and by default every 15 minutes it creates a backup and it's stored in that location we discussed earlier when we were looking at the default locations for each new project. You can, if you want, back up your project to the Creative Cloud. Projects can get rather large, multiple dozen megabytes. And depending upon the speed of your Creative Cloud connection, you may not want to do that. You may want to use Dropbox. It may be easier. If you want, when autosave occurs, it will also save the current project. But by default, Premiere does not save your project. You need to type Command S or Control S on Windows to save your project. And it will automatically save a backup, remember it's always doing backups, not saving your media, will automatically do a backup every 15 minutes provided something has changed in the project during those 15 minutes. If nothing changes, it doesn't create a backup. It creates 20 versions. When it hits the 21st version, the earliest version, version 1, gets deleted. Remember, these are only backups. It's not your project. You determine when your project gets saved. This is just simply doing a backup. So by limiting the number of backup versions, it avoids having your hard disk get filled up with stuff that you don't need. Backups, as I said, are stored based upon what you set as a location when you first created the project. Media has a lot of settings, most of which the defaults are fine, but this setting I want you to pay attention to. Enable hardware accelerated decoding will speed working with H.264 and on newer computers, HEVC or H.265. Growing files are on by default and you want to turn them off. A growing file is a special kind of file that allows you to edit it while it's still being recorded. Think sports highlights. The game is going into the second quarter and you're doing highlights from the first quarter. Because Premiere needs to keep tapping your hard disk to say, is there anything new, is there anything new, is there anything new, by turning this off, you're just making Premiere focus on what you're doing rather than growing files which don't exist. If you're working with productions, these top three are turned off. If you're not working with productions, these top three are turned on, and the rest of them, oh, this one is important. Default media scaling. You want to change this to set to frame size. It's generally set to scale to frame size, set default media scaling, set to frame size, but I won't explain why <laughs> until we get to effects in a few weeks. Next thing to look at is media cache. This is how Premiere deals with all the workflow. Sorry. The next thing to look at is media cache. This is how Premiere deals with work files that it creates as part of your edit. Cache files are essential. You never work with cache files. Premiere can't live without them. There's no reason to change the cache database, but there is a reason that you want to delete your media cache files. Not every day, not even once a week, but one or two times a month, just to keep things clean, delete the cache files. The good news is, if for some reason you delete something that Premiere needs, it just recreates them. What this does is it keeps the database clean, minimizes storage for media that you don't need on your hard disk, and it's just a good practice to get into cleaning this stuff up once or twice a month, not more often than that. Memory. Video editing takes RAM. The more RAM, the happier it is up to a certain point. Based upon what I've seen, 
RAM between 16 and 32 gigabytes is great. This allows you to determine how much RAM is used by Premiere. You generally want to set the RAM reserve for other applications between 3 and 6 gigabytes, depending upon how much you've got. This allows email to work and web browsing to work and other applications to work, but leaves the, the largest portion of memory for Premiere. And this applies to all the Adobe applications. You don't need to set this for After Effects separate from Premiere, separate from Audition. You set this one setting and it's the same for all Adobe apps. In playback, you want to make sure that Enable Mercury Transmit is turned off. What Mercury Transmit is used for is sending media from your computer to a video monitor. Not a computer monitor, but a video monitor. If you're not feeding video to a video monitor, Mercury Transmit is not needed to turn it off. Again, it just decreases clock cycles on your CPU. If you are feeding a video monitor, then you'll want to turn this on. Next thing to look at is Timeline. Timeline allows us to set default durations for video and audio transitions, as well as when we import stills. I find the defaults are too long, and I generally change the defaults. I'm just letting you know these are here, so you can find this preference when you need it. For right now, we're going to leave it alone. Your screen will probably not match mine. That's perfectly okay. You can change it later. Finally, with trimming, although we're not talking trimming today, trimming is adjusting where two clips touch. One of the things that I'll recommend you do is to set the first two checkboxes on, and we'll talk more about why, next week. Once that's done, click OK. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for webinar 281. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.